Hey folks, it's Patriot Nurse. Thank you for joining me today. In this segment, we are going to discuss the top five herbs that you should have in bulk and keep them for your medical preparedness. So the herbs that I'm going to cover today are oat straw, comfrey, red raspberry leaf, nettle, and chamomile. Let's get started. Oat straw, we're gonna start with oat straw. Oat straw is, of course, from the plant where you get oats, the same oats that you eat for breakfast or using oatmeal cookies, for instance. Oat straw is rich in a whole bunch of different minerals, potassium, magnesium. Oat straw, in the way that it works in the body, it tends to work like a nervine, which is a class of herbs that are basically nerve food. They feed, they feed the nerves and essentially the, the blood flow that's going to them. So oat straw is a really wonderful herb to use uh, to support your natural sleep cycle. Um, because the body, in order to relax, the nerves have to be fed appropriately. If the nerves are constantly stimulated with excessive caffeine use, excessive tobacco use, then they're going to get depleted of the nutrients that feed them. And so oat straw is one of the herbs that I have in bulk and I use it regularly to support the health of the nervous system. But also it's good for teeth and bone support as well because it has these minerals in it that are so important. And it's as a pleasant taste to it. So it's pretty sedate when it comes to the herbal teas that you can create. Usually kids will drink it. Kids will drink the, the oat straw, at least the ones that I've made it for. So spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down or honey as the case may be. Comfrey, that's the next one. Now the, the comfrey has become kind of a hot button issue because everybody's so terrified of paralyzing alkaloids. And you know, the, the bottom line is when it comes to comfrey usage, if you suspect that the person has liver issues, then steer clear from it, all right? Like nobody's forcing you to use comfrey. Nobody is coming to your house and saying, you must have comfrey, you must put it in there, you must give it to people. Nobody is forcing you to do this. But comfrey itself, um, the leaf is what I use. Now it's interesting because all this smack being talked about comfrey, like, oh, it's gonna destroy your liver, it has alkaloids. These, these studies that are finding, or that found the level of alkaloids in comfrey were basically using comfrey that was wild sourced, but domestically um, grown comfrey, comfrey that is is propagated for you know, for sale directly to the market as opposed to something that you would find in the wild. Um, the 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 studies on the alkaloids found in in those variants were much lower. So uh, Susan Weed actually, who is kind of one of the big grandmothers of herbal medicine in the United States. She regularly, like once a week, makes a large thing of tea, basically of comfrey uh, for its properties. Now let's talk about the properties now that I've said, like quit freaking out about it. Uh, the properties of comfrey itself, comfrey is a cell proliferant. And so for that reason, some people obviously who have um, specific concerns about uh, growth or issues with cancers, things like that, may not want to use it. However, comfrey itself is very good at creating and knitting bones together. It is an active herb used in many of the traditional preparations for supporting the uh, regeneration of bone tissue after, for instance, breaks, sprains, things like that, but also with the creation of, of good and healthy tissues and for the support of good and healthy tissues. So yeah, it's uh, some people are worried about it, but uh, Dr. Christopher actually talks about if if you're worried about using comfrey, then you, know, you can avoid it and you can um, use certain parts of the leaves as opposed to, for instance, the root. You would not want to use the root internally. The leaves are a little bit different story depending on what you got. So I, this is a short video. I will not be going into depth about this. If you want more depth, then you can come to my class on nutrition, herbs, and old school disease. You can find that at thepatriotnurse.com. Next one here is red raspberry leaf. Red raspberry leaf, this is the friend of women, all women of reproductive age. Uh, this is a really good thing to consider being on if you are a man of reproductive age and you are hoping at some point to sire an offspring. This is also something to consider. Um, because it tends to have a supportive effect on the reproductive system. Interestingly enough, though, it also has a soothing and calming effect for the throat, and it has astringent properties, and so some people will actually make a tea out of it and use it as an enema if they're, if they're having issues with, for instance, colon health, and wanting to give a little bit more direct approach 
to supporting the colon health. Red raspberry itself is rich in citrate of iron, and so for that reason, it is an excellent tea to consume for our mummies who are pregnant. It has strengthening and tonifying properties for the uterus in particular. When I used to have uh, goats, when I used to be a goat mommy, I would feed my pregnant goats the red raspberry leaf. Not only did they have very, very easy labors because of course the uterine muscle had been strengthened, but also their milk production was through the roof. So this is a wonderful thing to have for cold season, but also if you are a woman or if you are a man looking to have children, or if you just want a really good source of vitamin C to help prevent tooth issues secondary to scurvy, yarrow scurvy, Curve, the things you have. By the way, I'll put links to all this in the description box below. Man, it's so easy for you. All you gotta do is go description, click, boom, there it is. This next one is nettle leaf. This is from Stinging Nettle. Nettle leaf is overall a very tonifying and enriching herb. It tends to help people particularly in the support of proper immune response. So people who are struggling with allergies, asthma, things like that, oftentimes they will find and report relief from their symptoms, seasonal or otherwise, through regular consumption of nettle leaf because it is rich in um, urticaric compounds. So essentially what it does is it uh, counter stimulates the body if that makes any sense and it also is quite rich in various minerals and is overall a very very good herb to consider the regular imbibing of in the tea form i'll talk about making teas here in a second the last one here is chamomile all right this is german chamomile chamomile is a wonderful herb to have because i mean most people have had it in their life most people have actually used it in you know the commercial preparations, not thinking about it, just having something nice to help them go to sleep at night. Chamomile is indeed um, a mild sedative. It is a nervous soporific, fancy term. Basically, it chills the body out in, in its nervous sense. It brings people's stimulation level down. There are also a couple of other very interesting uh, medicinal properties that chamomile has that are particularly useful for any parent of small children or anyone wanting to prepare for long-term medical issues. The first is that it is a diaphoretic. A diaphoretic herb is an herb that elicits sweating and a sweating response from the body. In cases of fevers in times past, one of the preferred methods before we had access to conventional medical treatments um, the traditional way that fevers were managed was from a supportive versus a suppressive methodology. I talk about this in length in my classes, but in particular, by identifying a child having a fever or any person having a fever early on and supporting the body's sweating process through the imbibing of strong medicinal teas, particularly of diaphoretic herbs like chamomile, it was observed that the body was able to go through its proper inflammatory and response, immune response process in a much more streamlined, easy fashion and tended to have faster, quicker recoveries with better outcomes, at least in the past, right? Before we had the FDA and people to uh, protect us from ourselves. Yes, so the diaphoretic compound, that is one of the compounds, or diaphoretic properties is one of the properties that chamomile has. A second property that is particularly useful is that it tends to have mild anti-inflammatory uh, properties as well. And I actually have seen this in particular. Uh, there was a woman that I knew who had very, very severe food allergies. And I actually watched this and witnessed this entire story in person. Very severe food allergies. Um, went to lunch at a restaurant, somehow must have come in contact with some sort of cross-contamination. And within approximately an hour, her neck started swelling, swelling. She started getting hives. And so um, I witnessed her making a strong tea of the chamomile and uh, within approximately, and she drank, it was probably like a quadruple strength from what you would see, like four tea bags in one uh, eight ounce cup. And so watching her make this quadruple strength tea and watching her drink it, I literally watched over the course of 15 to 20 minutes, the hives go down, 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 down and resolve. So it has been used in times past to support a proper and healthy immune system and a proper inflammatory response. So these are the top five herbs that I would recommend that you have. Again, they are oat straw, comfrey, red raspberry leaf, German chamomile, 
and Stinging Nettle. I have links to all these in the description box below so that way you can find them. I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, I hope you'll subscribe to me here on YouTube. You can also support me on Patreon, Subscribe, Star, Cryptocurrency, and PayPal. I have links down below. Also, if you want to get trained and you want to learn more about this, you want to learn more about the herbs, um, then you can come out to class. Before I do that, let me give you a little quick taste here. If you just want to make a quick tea, get you about an ounce of the dried weight of the herb, put it in one of these big giant half gallon jars and pour boiling water over it, lid it up, like cover it, let it sit for an hour. Then you've got a basically medicinal strength herbal tea. It really is that simple. If you want to learn more about how these are used and how they were used in the past and how they were traditionally used in times of epidemics with things like smallpox, typhoid, dysentery, come out to class. I have medical prep 101 and 201, and then I have nutrition herbs and old school disease. So I'm going to be teaching these, Lord willing, next year in 2021 in person. You can find the schedule at thepatriotnurse.com. Also, if you're looking to pregame or maybe can't quite get Get to a class in person. I also have a four hour online course called the foundations of medical prep, which will help pregame you for it for the <laughs> in, in person training events. And you can find that at the Patriot Nurse Academy.com. Four hours under $29. Get a downloadable workbook. You can print it out and work on your own off offline, and you've got something, God forbid, should the grid go down. I hope it was helpful for y'all. Have a wonderful weekend for now. It's Patriot Nurse signing off, and I'll see y'all later. Mwah. Bye.